Hi, this is Brian. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure multiple door for use in a screencast. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you step by step how to do that using a software called Jack. Right, so this video is all about install and configure Jack in Windows 7 64-bit by routing multiple doors for screencasting. The platform that I have is obviously Windows 7 64-bit Home Premium Edition. And the audio interface that I use is a, just a humble PreSonus AudioBox 22 VSL, which is a 2-in and 2-out USB audio interface. And the door that I'm going to demonstrate is using Studio One 2.6, and I will be using the Adobe Audition CS6 to capture my voiceover and also capture the output from the Studio One 2.6. Now, how do I do that? Now, of course, my initial idea was just simple. Right, so I just need to, for example, just use a any screen captured software such as Camtasia. So now what I did is just to input my mic into my audio interface and thinking of just need to configure the Camtasia to capture my system sound, capture my input. So as usual, right, uh, Camtasia to configure everything accordingly. But once I hit record, you know, I able to record the screen, but not my voiceover, not the output from my Studio One. So that get me thinking, how do I do that? Or how are the people doing it in my situation? The solution is using Jack. Now, first thing I need to do is to download Jack 2 for Windows from the website www.jackaudio.org slash download. So this is the website that I went to. So you can download for Windows 64-bit using this. After you download, so you just run the setup program. So this is what you get, the setup program. You run the setup program, just go to the next. Now just be careful with some information here that later I will walk you through as well. It says here uh, there will be a company with this download. Actually the setup will set up something called Jack, right? So this is a server piece of the software. And also there's a client piece of the software called QJack Control, which is the user interface. Now we need to do some configuration on this user interface to control the Jack server portion. Right, so here's some important information. I'll walk you through with that. So then you go next and just follow the on-screen instruction. So the software will get installed. Now after you install, okay, so you still need to do one more step, which is if you look at this instruction on the same uh, website, jackaudio.org slash jack underscore on underscore windows there would have some instructions so we need to manually uh, register a particular dll called jack router dot dll okay so how do we do that so first you start your command prompt okay so as we have a command prompt start as or run as administrator so i run this as administrator Right, so this is the one. So what I'm going to do is that uh, let me just increase the size so that you can see the command go rec server 32. Just navigate to this and then you copy the path. And then you paste it here, then just add jack router dot dll. So you hit enter, it will say it will be registered. Right? Since I have done that, so I no need to doing it again. Alright, so that would be the first step. Install and have a minor manual configuration of the DLL. So the next step required to start the jack control and do further configuration so that you will use your audio interface ASIO driver. Now what I'm going to do is start the jack control. Now over here, just back to your screen. And now normally what I'll do is that I will create a shortcut, right? So you can do that in window easily. 
and also you can configure it to start as compatibility set to run this program as an administrator okay so back to that now let's start it okay so as you can see that this is started now this one I already configured the jack audio right to use my audio box 22 VSL driver which is the audio box driver so the ratio is started now this is crucial now once you if you are just begin right so what we need to do is that make sure the setup is exactly something like this now you can give it a name so otherwise it will use the default setting now what i'm going to do is that i give it a name called audiobox 22 vsl now the server prefix please just add a hyphen s and the driver you set should set to port audio this is to support the asio so unless you're using the other like Linux and so on you can use Alsa or Mac using core audio for us in the show so we use port audio and the interface All right so now this one is set to default because this is my default interface but if you can you can click the arrow here it will show a list of interfaces that are available from your built-in sound card used as either MME or window direct sound as well as if you have other ASIO driver installed, like in my case, I have ASIO for all, but specifically, I would use AudioBox ASIO driver. So if you would want to set this up, okay, for example, select this driver and the input device and output device and the number of channels. So it will be set as default to your hardware, right? But uh, if you go for more advanced uh, setting, actually you can change whatever virtual input output that you have, the numbers input output. Now next you will see that the frame or period. So you can set to, for example, 128 all the way to 1024. Okay, so you have all these setting and your sample rate. Okay, you can set to 48,044. Uh, point one, you know those kind of setting. Okay, so I just put it as a uh, standard, right? Forty-eight thousand, and uh, then you can set the timeout is to ten thousand. Okay, so maximum number of ports so you can set. All those also used for networking purposes. Now that's the basic setting that you need to have. And uh, so if this is the first time, so you got to save, or if you make any changes, so you got to save it. Okay, so I'm not going to make any changes. So that's all I have. Now you're back to this jack control. So next thing you can see is that you can see that there's a connect button. Okay, so you click the connect button and you can see that we have a system output. Then we have a writable client or called input port. So what it really means is that this is actually should be an output okay, from your two input captured one captured two right which is my audio box channel one channel two okay so and then you can route it to the output okay so the output which is a writable client okay so you can connect such as this then you will see the line showing something like this right if I want to have a door started, right? so let's say if I go to start my studio one, before you start any door, so it's advisable to set or run as administrator also. So as you can see that my door is started. The first thing I need to do, right? So is that let's check this out. I still have an input, okay, output, or you can consider this as my output port to my input. Now next, what I want to do is that I want to be able to do all the routing from here, but you can't see my Studio One listed over here. So in order for my Studio One to be listed here, I need to configure my audio setup. Currently, I'm using Asia for all, or you can also use my audio box if I just want to use audio box. But for in this case, I'm going to use Jack Router. Now, why I want to use Jack Router? Because Jack Router is actually like a middleman between Studio One or any door to the hardware ASIO driver, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change it to Jack Router. As you can see that the sample rate is 128 sample, which is the same setting that I have. 
okay so this is a latency time and so on so when i click ok that's all i need and next back to the routing so now you can see my studio one listed over here and it also did some auto routing so which means if you expand here my studio one i have so many output from my studio one it's simply because i have made some changes in the ini file in the jack folder okay so i actually can have 16 output my hardware has only got two output okay so now the output one and two automatically route to the system playback now since i'm using my audio box so it's actually from my audio box output Okay, whether it's from the headphone out or the monitor out left and right okay and then you also will see there will be a writable client input port with studio one so what does it mean so which mean whatever i captured right let's say my input channel one and input channel two will also go to the input one of my studio one and input two of my studio one okay so logic isn't it so your input supposed to go to your whatever captured supposed to go to your input so whatever from your output it will route it to this output now the fun part will start so now i will reconfigure audition to capture the output from my studio one as an input for the audition i already started my audition so so far i've been recording my own voice over here now what i supposed to do is instead of using the normal driver so I should change to Jack Router as my driver. So I'm going to make some changes. So they might cause uh, some of the things that will not get recorded for a short while. Right. Okay. So I will stop recording here and I do some configuration and continue the recording. Okay. I'm back. So what you are seeing here is a very simple thing. I just uh, reconfigured Jack Router as my audio input. Now let's check back here. So now you see an Adobe Audition CS6 over here, right? So this is output. So since this output is also routed to my playback system, which is my headphone currently. So now I'm hearing a lot of voices from my system captured directly from the Studio One output going out from my Adobe output which is from the master here going out now next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to capture the output from Studio One right to the audition input okay so here I want to configure one more track let me stop recording and add one more track okay so I'm continue uh, the recording so what I supposed to do is I actually need to configure this as you can see that I added a track now the next thing is that I need to capture the input output All right so let's back to the router here so what I'm going to do is that now the studio one okay output one and two obviously I'm only got one and two so this output one and two I will route to the input three and four of the audition okay so just drag three drag it to four now once i enable this capture the output from my studio one right so here in the audition i need to configure the input to read my studio one Okay, so although I'm recording here, but it never captured anything, but that's fine because uh, if I want to play something from Studio One, so you can see that I'm getting the signal. I'm getting my voice over so you see that there's some activities over here so while I'm still capturing my uh, screen so I can explain something about studio one okay yeah as you can see that okay so I can change the drum bass this is my effect right so I turn on effect ok 
okay so remember this is the routing part so now just to recap what we have done so far install and configure our jack audio and next we start the jack control and we configure the settings to use our ASIO driver and next we can start our studio 1 2 and configure the driver to use jack router then i have the adobe cs6 same thing configure the audio driver to use the jack router and then you start the routing from the jack control okay so just mapping the right input to the right output and so on and finally of course you start all the Camtasia recording so you don't use the mic you don't capture the system sound recording so that's how I did the whole thing now, of course when I do this video I have to make some changes in order to show you the process of configuring jack now if you look at the diagram it's something like this now we have our audio interface which in normal case we use the ASIO driver to communicate with our DAW okay any ASIO aware client but in this case since after we install the jack so the jack have two portion the jack server and it comes with a jack control now what happened is that in order for our DAW to use the ASIO driver we can't use it directly now what we do is that we will use the jack router that will communicate with the jack server in turn the jack server configured to use the ASIO driver right and then finally communicate with your hardware okay, connected with your mic and so on so we can have multiple ASIO aware client to be connected via the jack router and they all use the same hardware driver if you know how to do all this uh, inter-application uh, audio routing you can actually like open a web browser games media player and route the output into your DAW during the skyping so you can play background music at the same time so there are many possibility and there are many third-party application okay, to make it even easier to do all the routing for you but this is just how I do it okay so I hope you able to do something like this in the future if you want to do a DAW screencasting thank you